In this video, we're going to be talking about how does your body generate the antibodies that it needs to actually stick onto the coronavirus. And this is one thing that is, at a high level, extremely powerful and extremely beautiful stuff. And to me, the amazing thing here is that every single cell in your body has the same exact DNA. It's three billion base pairs of nucleotides, yet despite just having this one unique individual DNA, a plasma cell or B cell is able to make one trillion different varieties of antibodies. So the question here is how do we going from DNA that is very uniform and singular to something that can make over one trillion varieties of an antibody? And when we're fighting the coronavirus, we need this in order for our body's adaptive immune systems to have antibodies that can actually stick onto things that we've never seen before. And so this is called VDJ recombination. And so what we're going to do next is jump to the whiteboard and actually begin looking in a little bit more detail as to what's going on behind the scenes inside of your immune cells to actually make this whole thing happen. So it's really interesting stuff and we'll see you there. Alrighty, and so now if we were to look at your bone marrow, and inside of your bone marrow, we're going to see a bunch of premature developing B cells. And the thing that's interesting about all these premature B cells is that they all have the same germline configuration. They all have the same starting point DNA. And so our goal here is to somehow figure out how are we going to make antibody diversity in these B cells that have the same starting point germline DNA. And so if we were to zoom in in this DNA, we're going to find regions called introns and exons. And the important thing about exons is that they are potentially expressed and introns are never expressed. And the thing with exons is that we can cut out any number of exons in any number of ways, leading to an enormous multiplier effect of diversity. And to give you an example, I've arbitrarily labeled these exon regions A, B, C, and D in this short segment that we have here. So note here how I have only one starting point DNA, but depending on how I've cut out these exons, I can get an enormous variety of potential DNA. So what I can do is I can cut out exon B, and I would be left with something that has a sequence of A, C, D. I can decide to cut out B and C and be left with A, D. I can cut out A and I would be left with B, C, D. I can cut out A and C and be left with B, D. I can cut out D and be left with A, B, C. And so as long as this order is A precedes B precedes C precedes D, this rule will hold true and I can make any combination of these. I can have A all by itself. I can have B all by itself or C or D. And so we can see just very quickly in one breath, we're able to make nine different types of DNA from our starting point single DNA just by deciding which exons to cut out arbitrarily. And it only happens at one point in the B cell's life cycle. And once this B cell has been assigned these exons and had the other exons cut out, it will now have a unique region. And so within each region, and we've called these regions V, D, J, as well as C or constant regions, we've given them very specific exons and we've cut them out in essentially a random way. What happens next is we get an additional layer of shuffling in that these V segments, D segments, and J segments, and C segments will come together again kind of randomly. And this randomness is adding again to this diversity. And so we have an additional recombination event after that that again shuffles the cards yet a third time. And so what we get after another round of recombination and deciding arbitrarily which exons to cut out of our DNA is a tremendous variety of potential DNA transcripts. And so going to what happens inside of all of your cells is you've got now this unique DNA transcript to that specific B cell and a neighboring B cell inside of your uh, bone marrow is going to have a different recombination of VDJ genes as well as a different recombination of exons and this is going to make that B cell different from the B cell right next to it different from all the other B cells in your bone marrow and from there 
its DNA is going to get transcribed into RNA. RNA is basically a copy of the blueprint, the DNA, that can go outside of the nucleus and actually go make a protein. And the protein that we're going to make here is going to be the actual antibody, like an IgG antibody, which would have a very unique surface on it where it will bind onto an epitope. And also, despite having the name constant region, these constant regions do have a little bit of variety in them. And depending on how these constant regions have decided to recombine, you will get different types of antibodies. And that's the reason why you see all these colorful shapes right here. You can get IgG antibodies, you can get IgM antibodies, depending on how the C regions have come together and recombined and shuffled, we get an enormous variety of antibodies. And so at the end of the day here, what we're seeing is that your B cell population can have upwards of one times 10 to the 11th different possibilities of how its genes came together, how its genes recombined to make a unique genetic starting point that could ultimately be translated into a protein such as an antibody that would give it an ability to fight off something that you will have never seen before, such as a pathogen like the coronavirus. And so that is going to wrap things up for this video. I hope you guys find it useful. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you all for watching. Please stay safe and please wash your hands and also take care.